Welcome back, I'm That Chemist, and today we're going to be figuring out which chemical will get this video demonetized. So let's start with fucking own. I wasn't able to find out anything about fucking own's name or why it was called that, but it seems like a chemical that might get a couple people triggered. So this one's pretty edgy. I think fucking own can probably go into A tier. We're not making any comments about its name other than it's got quite a unique name. Now, amyl nitrite. Amyl nitrite is commonly called amyl nitrate, but there's a big difference between a nitrite and a nitrate. I'm not sure why anybody would have issues with this one. It's a vasodilator, and it's used as an antidote for cyanide poisoning. It can also be used in organic synthesis for the preparation of diazonium salts. And in my time making diazonium salts, I have used probably hundreds of milliliters of amyl nitrite. So I'm not sure why anyone would have any issues talking about amyl nitrite. It's a totally normal compound, no major issues. I think this one could probably go right into C tier. Now let's talk about Bromo Dragonfly. This one's got a pretty awesome name. Bromo Dragonfly is a designer drug, and it is reported that its duration can last as long as one to four days. Four days is a pretty long duration. It gets its name because it's got a structure that somewhat resembles the wings of a dragonfly. This is kind of an interesting chemical. I've heard people mention it on YouTube before, so I don't think it's too much of a concern. Why don't we just put that into C tier for good measure? Let's talk about VX. This is a sketchy chemical. This is a concerning chemical that I think is probably going to go into S tier. This is a nerve agent, and it was used in the assassination of King Jong-nam. It's extremely potent and deadly. It can cause paralysis, and when you get paralyzed, you'll eventually die by asphyxiation because all of your muscles relax, including your diaphragm. So you're sitting there aware, slowly, as everything begins to fade. Pretty grim. This can go into S tier. Now we have room to talk about Bongkrek Acid. So bong crack is something you probably don't want to be consuming, although bong crack acid is also probably something you don't want to be consuming. It's a respiratory toxin that's produced in fermented coconut or corn from this one bacteria called Burkholderia gladioli pathovar cocovenenans. And it's particularly seen in this one coconut-based product called tempeh bong crack, which is now banned in Indonesia because sometimes this can be present. There have been deaths associated with this chemical. It's something you want to avoid, and it starts with a B, so we're going to put it into B tier. Now let's talk about polonium monoxide. This is one of those chemicals that I'm surprised it didn't come across a lot sooner because its chemical formula is fairly easy to recognize. I don't think anybody has any issues with this one, and it is somewhat amusing, so uh, why don't we put this one into D tier? I don't think anybody has any issues with it. Now, the one thing I will say here is that there's actually a trilogy. There's polonium dioxide and polonium trioxide as well and depending on how you want to write it you can have even more o's following the end of this formula so polonium monoxide it's definitely a chemical i'd like to see on some more shirts okay now let's talk about asoanine this is found in narcissus asoanus which is a very unfortunate name for a species of yellow flower this is an interesting scaffold because it's got four rings to it but overall it's relatively simple still. So the fact that asoanine is found in the species asoanus, I think probably puts this one into A tier. Now let's talk about hydrogen cyanide. This is a spicy chemical that a lot of people are familiar with. Now the mechanism of hydrogen cyanide's toxicity is that it's an inhibitor for cytochrome C oxidase, which is the last enzyme in the electron transport chain. When you're exposed to hydrogen cyanide, it can be lethal, although there are some chem tubers on YouTube who've consumed this, such as Cody's Lab, safely. Not everybody can smell hydrogen cyanide. I'm fortunate enough to be able to smell it. And there's this one trick that came from Woodward originally, where if you can't smell hydrogen cyanide, if you smoke while you're working with it, you get a unique taste if hydrogen cyanide is in the air. Now, I'm not endorsing that you do that, but if you can't detect hydrogen cyanide and you're working with it, Maybe that's an option. It was an option for chemists of the past. I don't know if it should be an option for chemists of the future. Hydrogen cyanide, I think it's fine to talk about. We can just put it into E tier. No major issues here. How about TNT? If you're an edgelord, you might have considered making TNT at some point. I would not encourage you to do that because that is a very dangerous thing to do. Surprisingly, most people know that TNT is an explosive, but it's also poisonous. It can cause poisoning to the liver, it can cause spleen enlargement, and there's harmful effects on the immune system as well when you breathe it in or are exposed to it in some other form. So TNT, it's a spicy chemical. It's three nitro groups, that's just dying to form CO2 and N2 gas. So TNT, it's definitely the bomb, so why don't we put it into B tier? Now, muronic acid, you'd have to be an idiot not to like this one. It comes originally from the name muronic acid, and... Muralic acid is named from the mora tree, specifically from the species Mora excelsa. 
So moronic acid, it's got kind of a dumb name, so why don't we put it into F tier? Now this one. We have Cuckerbitteril. I hope that you're not bitter with Cuckerbitteril. Cuckerbitteril gets its name because it resembles a pumpkin. And it's something that people have tried to use as a method for drug delivery. That was initially how I came across this molecule. It can host small molecules in here, and that might make it easier for stuff to get into cells. For instance, if you have something that won't easily cross through the cell membrane, if you can shuttle it in a Trojan horse like Cuckerbitteril, you can get it into the cell more easily. Now, you might be interested to know that while I was doing this presentation, my clicker broke, and I snapped the handle off of my clicker. I'll take a picture of that for you now. So if you fidget with stuff, uh, you might just break it. So Cuckerbitteril. Cuckerbitteril can go into C tier because it starts with cuck. That makes sense to me. Okay, Sarin. Sarin is like VX, except Sarin's not quite as bad as VX, but it's still really bad. It's a nerve agent. And the way it gets its name was kind of strange. Sarin was named in honor of its inventors. Chemist Schrader for S, Ambrose for A, Ritter for R, and I-N for... Jürgen von Lindy. Yeah, the I-N of Saren is from the I-N of Lindy, and I thought that was really dumb. Here's an interesting picture I found where they were testing if there was any Saren gas present in the Saren manufacturing facility, and they use a rabbit to see if there's any Saren present, because the rabbit will get exposed to the nerve gas and suddenly become limp if there is any present. I thought that was kind of interesting, and I feel bad for the rabbit having to do this. So Saren's another pretty bad one. Is it bad enough to go into S tier? Maybe. I think we'll put it into A tier for good measure because it's not as bad as VX. Propylhexadrin. Propylhexadrin is a chemical you probably haven't come across before. I'm not sure why anybody would have issues with this one. It's just an over-the-counter nasal decongestant. It's weird. It kind of resembles another molecule. If you're interested in what this targets, it targets the trace amine-associated receptor 1, TAAR1 receptor. Yeah, this is weird. It kind of looks like some other compound. I can't really quite put my finger on it. We'll put this into A tier just in case because it kind of just gives me uh, some sort of vibes I'm not too sure about. Nitrous oxide. The only reason people would want to use this is for whipped cream, right? This is a great chemical for whipped cream. It's a really great propellant to use for whipped cream. And it turns out that the characteristic taste of whipped cream that is propelled with nitrous oxide comes from the nitrous oxide in a major way. If you try whipped cream without nitrous oxide, it doesn't taste the same. Now, it's also been used as laughing gas, and that can be used for minimizing pain during surgery. So nitrous oxide, I'm not sure why anyone would have issues with this, but again, I feel pretty inclined to put this into like A tier. Odd, I'm not too sure why. Aircholine. Aircholine is a weird one. You might not have come across this one before. This is an uncommon stimulant that's found in the archaea nut, which is also known as the betel nut, B-E-T-E-L. It has similar properties to nicotine, although it's definitely a carcinogen. This one's kind of weird. I think I first came across it in an episode of Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia. Definitely a show worth checking out if you're interested in understanding more about drugs. Now, speaking of drugs, let's talk about cocaine. The only reason you'd want to use this is if you're selling soft drinks to people about 100 years ago. I'm not sure why those people kept coming back to soft drinks. It's just something about this ingredient just really compelled them to keep tasting it. I wonder why it was so popular. It's also been used as a local numbing agent in certain minor surgeries, for instance, in some dentistry. And this is a chemical that I think definitely has to go right into S tier. Now, bromic acid. Bromic acid is a chemical that looks pretty sus. It's used in the belyusov zabotinsky reaction, which is actually the reaction that Nile Red uses for the logo for his channel. And I'll include a link to his video about the belyusov zabotinsky reaction in the description. This molecule is a little bit sus. I don't think anyone's going to have any issues with it, though, so we'll put it right into F tier. Now, sodium oxybate. Again, we have another totally innocent molecule here. Nothing wrong with sodium oxybate, right? It's used to treat two symptoms of narcolepsy, sudden muscle weakness and excessive daytime sleepiness. This is pretty counterintuitive for me because it's a depressant, and I wouldn't have expected that you could treat narcolepsy with a depressant, but I'm not a medical doctor, so I guess I can give myself a break for not knowing that. Sodium oxybate, this is another one that's kind of weird. I think we're going to have to put this one into S tier too. Now let's talk about raminidin. Raminidin is an O-methylated flavanol that's present in many fruits and vegetables. People have extracted it from different sources such as cloves. And I think we're just going to have to ram this one right into D tier. 
Now here we have Mysterious Nitro Styrene. I'm not really sure how this one got onto the list. I wonder why anyone would make this. This is kind of a weird one. I'm going to put it into S tier just for good measure. Just get that, get that right out of here. Now here we have THC. There's several longer names for this chemical, and this is an interesting skeleton that has three rings. There's also this weird N-pentyl chain, and it's a secondary metabolite produced by some plants. Again, I don't know why this is such a remarkable chemical. I, I just have this feeling we probably need to put this one into S tier as well. Now here we have gamma butyrolactone, also known as GBL. This is another one, which is like, why is this on here? This is just a solvent. This is a reagent in organic synthesis. Uh, hey, hey, wait a second. What happens if you open up that lactone? Warfarin. Warfarin is a chemical that has somewhat of an amusing name. Hopefully you're not warfaring anyone at the moment. The name of warfarin comes from the Wisconsin Alumni Research Foundation for the wharf, and the erin comes from the fact that it's a coumarin, kind of similar to the ramnidin that we were just talking about. Warfarin is used as a blood thinning agent, as an anticoagulant. No major issues with this one. I think we can put this one right into F tier. Now here we have hypererectine. Hypererectine is found in the plant Hypecum erectum, which I thought was a somewhat unfortunate name. Hypecum erectum. It's a spirobenzyl isoquinoline alkaloid. I really like the structure of this one because it's got this interesting malleamid motif along with an amino group pendant off of it, which I thought was quite cool to see. Definitely a beautiful looking compound. And I'd understand why this molecule might make you a little bit stiff. Why don't we put it into B tier? Amygdalin. Amygdalin is a chemical that even normies know about. I think most of the people I grew up with knew about amygdalin and they knew its function when I was growing up, which is surprising because it seems somewhat obscure. The lesson with amygdalin is not to eat parts of plants that contain large amounts of amygdalin. Now, why is that? Amygdalin is a cyanogenic glycoside that's present in the seeds of certain fruits, such as apricots, peaches, apples, cherries. And what happens is this CO bond can get cleaved and this will release hydrogen cyanide. And that's something you definitely want to avoid. When this is released, you also get a benzaldehyde as well as this disaccharide, which is called gentibios, which is a dimer of D-glucose. Amygdalin, it's a somewhat sketchy one, but it starts with an A, so why don't we put it into A tier? Now here we have this chemical that's really dangerous, dihydrogen monoxide. Dihydrogen monoxide is a scary chemical because if too much of this chemical enters your body, you will die. This chemical is present in everybody's bodies in large amounts, and living organisms have become dependent on it. Dihydrogen monoxide, you have to be really careful. We'll put it into D tier. Now, diethylpentane, just be careful how you draw this one. I don't have anything else to say about it. Now, what I do have something to say about is homo aerodictol. Homo aerodictol is a compound which is analogous to aerodictol, which just lacks this methyl group on this oxygen here. It's found in the plant Yerba Santa, which is also known as Iriodictian californicum. And this compound has a unique property of being able to mask the taste of bitter chemicals such as quinine. I thought that was kind of interesting. And its name is also interesting to say the least. Why don't we put it into D tier? Now we have two left, Reshitin and Atrazine. Reshitin is a terpenoid compound produced by plants in the Solanaceae genus. This includes plants such as peppers, tomatoes, potatoes. And Reshitin was named after the potato cultivar Reshiri, which was discovered in 1968. So you might be thinking, you gotta be Reshitin me. This has to go at least into B tier. Now, last but not least, we have Atrazine. And I'm pretty confident that this will be the chemical that gets this video demonetized. So Atrazine, it's that chemical that Alex Jones has talked about. It's widely used as a herbicide that's employed for weeds in crops such as corn. It turns out that when tadpoles are exposed to this chemical, it will turn them into biological hermaphrodites, having characteristics of both male sex and female sex frogs. So maybe Alex Jones was actually onto something. Why don't we put this one into S tier? So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you want to check out more videos from this series, make sure you check out the link in the description. And I hope you have a great day.